Screw you guys. We're gonna start two minutes early. Those minutes early, we're gonna get two more minutes in of panel. In your face, you can't stop the beat. What's up? Silence. <laughs> silence. I love it, I love it, silence. It's really good. All right, so this is our... I did with our uh, podcast intro song. In the year 1997, the future is in chaos and turmoil. Mankind is on the brink of extinction. Brave survivors band together and build a time displacement apparatus to receive a signal from a parallel future. This transmission is the Bogotas. Florida Super Con. Yeah. Oh yeah. So we are the Vundacast. Um, I started the Vundacast back in 2013. We have blockbuster guy Frank here, our yeah. favorite minion, podcast editor extraordinaire. Um, we're a pop culture uh, podcast. So kind of the home of whatever. We talk about a little bit of this, a little bit of that, whatever interesting people we meet are fair game to be a part of the podcast, and all of you today are a part of this podcast. We are recording live. This will be an episode that is going to drop on uh, probably maybe in like two weeks. This episode will come out of the Vundacast on uh, Mondays. You can hear the Vundacast on Radiate.fm. It's a really fun internet radio station. And uh, they have all lots of crazy playlists. Lots of crazy stuff going on. You guys should check out Radiate.fm on Mondays. Me and Danielle over here, the Cool Fortress. Hello. We started the podcast back in 2013 reviewing the film The Wolverine, which the was classic. kind of scary, but not in the type of way we're going to talk about not in a good way. today. Mm-hmm. Um, one of the other early films that we reviewed that almost could have made the list was The Vineyard with James Wong, an amazing... 80s horror film directed by David Lopan himself, the star of Big Trouble in Little China. Um, and we basically have kept our podcast open to um, be about anything yeah. and be very inclusive. Danielle, you want to talk about the podcast and why we talk about horror movies? Oh, well, one of the things we love, love, love are horror. I mean, in general, I love horror of all kinds. Um, creature features, you know, to a lesser extent, slasher movies, you know. So that's one of the things we actually do tend to focus on a lot. And so we decided to start this, uh, do this show today, this podcast, to talk about 
our favorite horror movies and maybe get you guys interested in a movie that you have not heard of or would want to see. Um, One more introduction. We have brought a very secret, sneaky, special guest into the podcast today. Unbeknownst to anybody, Andres Meza, one half of the Meza Brothers directing team, part of the local Borscht Film Festival, and also a uh, director of the latest season of Ash vs. the Evil Dead, season three, episode three. Yep, apparently did. Um, this man has had a chance to direct both Bruce Campbell Bruce and Campbell. the Green Power Ranger, OMG. Yeah, yeah, we're working on a movie with the Green Power Ranger. Whoa, tell us a little bit about uh, about that movie. What's up? What's, what are you guys working on? It's a uh, it's a horror, f- a, a completely underwater horror film where he plays um, the brother of a scuba diver. Thing. And, and it's part of the Omni Boat anthology. Right? Correct, correct. So you guys probably never heard of it. We're the only short film that's a horror in this anthology that's sort of like um, that Paris Dejate or. You know, those VHS, that type of anthology film. So, Word. it's exciting. Word. We're editing it right now, so it's exciting. Woo-hoo. And it, it, when, when, uh, when is that going to drop? I have no idea. No, no, no. Like no, no Aquaman counter programming? Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So it's going to drop it on the same day as Aquaman to sabotage <laughs> DC. You've seen Boom. Aquaman, now see You're going to put the trident in them. I think they sabotage them. Oh, dear. So. <laughs> They'll be broken. Well, I don't know. It's just Aquaman. Like, imagine. They're going to spend so much. They're going to spend extra money on that. Oh. Because hypothetically, half the movie has to be underwater, right? Yeah. This is what always happens when we podcast. We always end up turning into a Marvel versus DC. So let's try to keep it into a no. movie. So, so we, have a, we have a couple. Movie, right? <laughs> what? I'd say he's the Green Ranger in the movie, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah Colin does his dragon sword. He has to find it underwater. We have a couple of uh, sub podcast brands in our podcast. So me and Andres have a show that I think we just retitled. Now this is podcasting. Ooh, an exclusive <laughs> for you. Used to be a whole lot of. Now it's called Now This Is Podcasting. And whoa, it's <laughs> way better. That's now way better. This. Right? Now this. Right. And I'm sure it's gonna get like eight more names <laughs> no, that's a before name. Aquaman comes out. You guys are, you guys are like a person rag Andy can't decide on a name. Yeah, exactly. Can't I think we're gonna change our name every episode, exactly. so we'll keep up. That Basically. makes more sense. Um, so we're just gonna start out, and we're just gonna do a little six, six, six. Each of us has picked six horror films that I guess are like vital to our existence, or we think are or extra special, or whatever our cr- tr- criteria was, and uh, well, we these. because we're gentlemen, and because I want to be the final girl, <laughs> Danielle, you get to go first. Danielle, the co-wordress, mistress of chicken nuggets, here are her picks. Let's go. Oh, wow, okay, so we're doing this in, uh, in, in this order, right? Did the fancy order. Did he? So I already told you. Okay. You know this. All right, so her first pick... My first pick was is a film The that Witch. Directed the Witch. Witch. Okay, yeah. The so dance. my horror movies, I'm sure, are going to get some controversial because I know that a lot of people hated The Witch. In fact, I have a very funny story that we went to go see The Witch, Stephen and I, and this family. Well, this family sat through the entire movie. Um, so did an older gentleman who, at some point in the film, just kind of gave up on it and started talking very loudly in Spanish. Um, I don't remember what it was about. Then the family had brought their small child and they had waited till the end of the film and decided, we hate this, and tried to get their money back. <laughs> and I mean, that's kind of like eating the whole burger and then going to the server and being like, I hated this burger. But they really did try. And then people at the, the kiosk were kind of like, you can't, you can't do that, you already watched the whole movie. But so it was controversial because people thought it was slow and boring and... And then the best part was, I walked up right after this guy did. And I was like, yo, I want to complain about that guy <laughs> who brought his kid to the movie and ruined my theatrical experience when this kid kept on asking weird questions and making me uncomfortable when he was watching. And they gave us free tickets. In front of his face. <laughs> in front of his face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Walked up, he's like, did you just get like free readmit tickets? And we're like, yeah. And we're like, yeah, what about that's it? right. Uh. And, and what then about he walked it? back in, and then the guy was like, no, you can't get anything again. What about it? Kicked him out. Boom. <laughs> it was be respectful. Uh, Watch this. you be quiet. So that's our first pick. And that's so why it's our favorite movie. horror movie. And let because me, we no. got free tickets. Boom. It's my favorite horror movie. Which one? Because The Witch, my number one, my first pick. Thank you. Because... It uh, it kind of made me want to sell my soul to Satan at the end of the film. I don't know if that sounds weird, but it does. 
uh, first of all, it's gorgeous. I, I am a big fan of horror movies being, um, you know, framed in really beautiful sort of, uh, these beautiful pastiche, yeah, yeah, nice. just that, yeah. that, just that, go just the gorgeous setting, and especially you know the period. Um, everything looks like a it. portrait, sort of in a way. Like, I do. I love that. I love artistic horror. I love you know. I mean, one of my uh, uh, me honorable mentions is Suspiria because that's a great kind of visual horror. Well, spoilers. It's coming later. What's wrong with you? Whoa. But um, the witch too. Also, I just I really enjoyed the story. Um, I thought it was creepy and oppressive and it had uh, a lot of a sense of just what the hell is going on and I also one of the, one of the you will see my picks that I picked um, I tend to find horror in the human experience like I like that kind of horror so the the scariest stuff that can happen to people is the stuff that happens to them in everyday life grief and you know tragedy mental illness you know things like that those can be the most horrible things that could happen to someone um and so i think when you explore that in a really you know in kind of an interesting artistic manner you know not not exploitative but really kind of dig deep into what kind of things can break people and how scary that can be i really appreciate that kind of horror so yeah uh, i'd like to add that i think one of the things that makes the witch kind of brilliant is a like the historical accuracy of the way they talk, like I needed subtitles for that movie because oh, yeah, I yeah. couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't understand what they were saying, totally. and then that brought an authenticity to it. And then, a lot of the times when you have these type of, I call them artsy fartsy horror films, it's like, oh, is there a witch yeah. or is there not? And it's like the first five minutes, there's a fucking witch. Edgar's the director. And she kills a baby. You know? Yeah, Edgar's the director of one best director at the Sundance Film Festival and that's for a this movie. Yeah. With a horror movie. That's how strong A24's horror movie penis is. Yeah. Well, dick. I'm going to say dirty words in here. I don't care. <laughs> it's, it's late it's, at it's night. It's 18 and up. 18 and yeah. up. It's, it's oh, past oh, 11 o'clock. Vagina! <laughs> it's past 11 o'clock. It's adult swim time. Anyway, <laughs> so, um, yeah, no, so it's it's a great, I think, give it a chance if you just kind of stayed away from it because you're scared of it because you thought it was boring and slow. Give it a chance, experience it. It's very atmospheric. Yeah. So if you're yeah. into like that yeah. Asian yeah. horror yeah. stuff, this is as close as it's going to get with yeah. the Western yeah. Asian yeah. style Perfect. atmosphere. Perfect. All right, my next pick Wait, is... Hold up, hold up. Can I chime in on The Witch? I found that if you listen to it with headphones or really great volume, then you, you can You have to watch it over it. again. Yeah, but I, I told people, like yeah. some people that were like, ah, oh, it was okay. Then I told them, wait, watch it with that Surround sound. sound. Because he's it's like a video game. Yeah. At the very end, you don't hear the devil's voice because he's whispering in your ear. Yeah, you can hear oh, that's it. awesome. What's so that? if you listen to it with headphones, it gets this whole ASMR kind of crap. Yeah, it yeah. does. Yeah. 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 Is that director doing Nosferatu, the remake? What? Or is he doing... That director, I heard he was doing something else, right? I have no, I have not heard what he's doing yet. I have, no, probably, I have no idea. I have not heard at all what he's doing yet. Yeah, but I could have sworn I heard. That would be pretty <laughs> cool if he's doing Nosferatu. That would be very excited to see that. Danielle's number two pick, which we 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 had to fight over oh, this one with like a shank with a with a stake. Oh, no, 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 no. Yeah, I'm thinking of the people because sorry. I love yeah. Kurt Russell and bearded Kurt Russell is the like final Pokemon form of Kurt Russell. <laughs> Creature features. Uh, can can really I really love a good like VFX movie and um, and I think the thing just this movie horrifies me to this day and I've watched it several times and every time I watch it I find something to be unsettled by um I there's two scenes and obviously spoilers if you you know a, a little bit but I, I'll try not to spoil too much but just a little there's two scenes that really always terrify me and one of them really isn't something that I think people not everyone pays attention to, but when they first find the uh, spaceship crash or the strange excavation site, let's just put it that way, um, there's a block of ice that's been carved out that's about like 50 to 100 feet away from the site of the crash. And I don't know why that just terrifies me to think of whatever this thing was trying to climb its way out of its ship and ended up there and I just, I don't know, there's just something really disturbing about that moment, and then the, yeah, this moment, that moment right there, just him with the that vacant dude. stare, the breath, and that yeah. unearthly scream, and I don't know how they got that terrifying sure. howl, but that always gives me chills, but to me, that yeah, the thing is great, because I remember listening to someone, and I can't remember their name, but they said, every time you watch that movie, you, you can forget who is the thing, like, every time. 
Yeah. And and I do. I forget sometimes. I'm like, in the scene. Who in the scene? Who's the thing again this time? Who's the one sitting there? You know, and it's it's cool. Yeah. yeah. Uh, do you guys know how the prequel ruined the Everything. ending of the thing? There's a prequel. There's a prequel. A terrible. It's prequel. like a pre-make, I think they call yeah. it now, where it's like a pre. It's it's, it's from horrible. the. Don't huh? watch it. It's a, it's a prequel sequel all about the Russians. Right, so that'll be our Whoa, first. Well, the Russians and the guy who plays Tormund Giants Bane on Game of Thrones has a great part in it. It's like. But do you know how that ruined games. the original ending of the thing? No. Uh, because they, the dogs. Thing, so my you should know because dogs? in the prequel it says that the thing can't could only take organic. Um, like body parts, uh, so like they found like the caps of people's teeth or something yeah. like that. Like so, and then at the end of the thing, Childs has an earring, so he's definitely not the thing according to the prequel. So uh, that ambiguity is completely gone because of the because of the prequel. So it under damn. So I really like that. That's, like, that's, that's hard work for you to fuck up like yeah. the, the original like that much. Wow. Like that's such a big. Fuck and I think it's blocked. Prequel because it was so bad that I don't remember them doing that. Thank you for ruining it for me. You're Once welcome. Again. That's what I meant to do. I'm gonna ruin a lot of movies. That's that's as if they did a, a Freddy the Krueger prequel, but it turns out he was cool with all the kids. He was framed. <laughs> what the hell? He was like Mr. Rogers. It wasn't Freddy all along. It was a wacky adventure. It was, it was the principal from the second movie the whole time. Oh my god. What you want to say, blockbuster guy? So all right. So if that's your opinion of that in the prequel, what about the remake? Wasn't that a remake? That, that was that, the prequel. It was a pre-make. Like, it Hollywood has all these yeah. really weird, um, like, reboot. names now. There's reboot. There's, uh, what is it? Fresh reboot. Uh, there's pre-make. Like, a, the, the prequel sequel, where you have half the movie in the prequel, yes, and the second yes. half in the sequel, like, like Snow White and the Huntsman sequel, the Huntsman, whatever. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They even named it the thing again. They could have done, like, Exactly. Yeah. Oh, you should have called it that thing. That would have been thing. actually classy. You do. That time. That would have been classy because it at least would have been based on the short story and stuff. Yeah, yeah it was. Danielle's third pick. Cruising along. My third and my fourth pick are kind of related to each other, but yeah, my fir my third pick is uh, Rosemary's Baby. Uh, Let's get some audio oh, on this. Oh, yeah. yeah. The original. The original. Of course. There's a new Rosemary's Baby. There's a new Rosemary's Baby. A TV baby. show. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no, 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 no. Absolutely the original. 100%. The Roman Polanski. Yes. Yes. Um, the hard to... Who's in France right now? The hard, the hard to love... Uh, so separate the art from the artist. <laughs> Rosemary's baby. Uh, Rosemary. Rosemary. Shut up, you're in the drum I don't hear you. for Rosemary's baby. My favorite Suck line it. in this movie is, It's Fidel Sassoon. <laughs> she says that like eight times. It's Fidel Sassoon. Yeah, this is, I mean, obviously this is uh, going to give it away, give it away now, but I mean, it's just so classic. I, everything that is how the scene is framed, it's how, how, expre how the expression, how he captures the expression on her face, how good Mia Farrow is at this the, moment. The, and then this music, this wacky ass music that's about to come up. And all the character actors just like, they're all so unique, but they all feel like really grounded. What the hell is that? What is that? How do you make that step? But it's terrifying. That's when what it sounds. That's what the devil movie. sounds like. When you really experience this whole movie. He has his father's eyes. Oh my god. I mean, yeah. He has his father's eyes. What are you talking about, guys? Eyes are normal. Satan is his father. What have you done to him? You maniac! I definitely. Satan is his father. He came up from hell. The son of mortal woman. The Hail Satan! Hail Satan! And his name is Adrian. Can we get a Hail Satan from the audience on the podcast? Hail Satan! Hail Satan! Hail Satan! Hail Satan, dude! Hail Satan! And they're just so joyous and, and jubilant. All the women in the world! It's just all crazy. It's all fucked up. And she's like the matchmaker, like all the people. It's like, okay, Cupid, but for safety. Rob Zombie's a little sage. And that's some rosemary. Hey, I'm not sleep on things. And look at her makeup. Oh, man, just look at her. Like, she's so sloppy. Oh, I love it. I, yeah, this is. The, the the woman who was like, he chose you. Oh, look at those eyes. I I love this movie. I love, again, this. Oh, no, absolutely. Oh, no, 
absolutely. It's, it's fantastic. Yes. It's been, it's fantastic. And let's let's just Rosemary's Baby. You know, I don't know if you if you watch an older film. It's a simple story of a, of just a woman and where she lives and her baby, and that's it. But, but no, but it's, I love uh, things. Uh, kind of horrors that I really love are just when. It, I mean, and they can be very bleak and kind of depressing because you know sometimes people love a horror movie where you kind of get to fight out your way out and and be the be the number one and you win at the end. And I do appreciate a horror movie like that. But what I, I really kind of love when it's just like at the end of the day, the horrible realization is this person was trapped, trapped in their circumstance. There was nothing they could do to get out, and they did it. And then so that kind of relates to Hereditary because Hereditary uh, is ex heavily influenced by Rosemary's Baby. No spoilers, I haven't seen it yet. Uh, I will not spoil. Oh. Okay. No, no. This we is, can just watch this the trailer. This is just the trailer. We're just saying go see it. It's still in theaters. It's, it's, that, that's it's creepy. Awesome There's it's great another, amazing really imagery, yeah. amazing thematics. Another really beautiful you atmospheric sound? film. No, no, I said don't, don't no do sound, sound. If okay. we don't want to spoil. And um, it's another atmospheric <laughs> film. It's about, it's one of those movies that I talked about. It's about grief. It's about mental illness, it's about family, it's about family tragedy, and if you appreciate the idea of horror as you could, the human experience, this is just a great, I mean, oh man. And this is another controversial one. People walked out, people hated it. Well, it's because it's very interesting at the end. It's... No, but I mean, people thought it was boring, people really? thought it was, oh, oh yeah, our audience was like commenting at the end, like, what the hell was that? That was like two hours of my life gone, and all this kind of stuff like that. Because it, 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 the way that it's kind of filmed is it just keeps going and going to kind of give you the experience of grief. And I'm sorry, you wanted to... <laughs> Boom. No, I just wanted to chime in that you could probably do like a really like good, like depressing horror like trilogy with like Hereditary, The Witch, and The Babadook. Oh, the huh? so like the depression yeah. trilogy. Yeah. <laughs> what type of depression do you want? <laughs> the, you won't feel good after this trilogy. <laughs> you will feel sad. Um, but it's it's so beautifully filmed and, and I yeah I mean it is kind of new so I don't want to spoil it but great performances by like everybody a, is that a first time director that did it yeah it's a guy named Ari Aster who this yeah. is his first movie like the witch yeah. at like thirty something a twenty four man they find good talent they give them the resources that they need Brad Pitt, bro. and they do it the the other thing about the movie is that it's very economical yes. with where it does its horror and uses a lot of you know uh, like you know small effects like you just saw. Like, you know, like none of these effects look too expensive or crazy, and everything that is expensive looks pristine. And it, it is, they actually, just to, um, not, this isn't really a spoiler, but everything was basically practical. Um, there is one scene, and it's in the trailer, so I'm not giving anything away, a bird flies against a window. They actually fired a fake bird out of a cannon. Like, that wasn't CGI. So, I mean, they really committed... A fake bird, not a real bird. <laughs> they, really, um, uh, they really committed to making this movie tactile and real, and I think that that is just a very effective way to tell a horror story. Um, yeah, I mean... So. And Danielle's next pick. I think this is almost Whoa. my last one. The Warrens. The Conjuring. Boom, yes. And I picked The Conjuring... Because it's one of those movies that it may not. I mean, I mean, I, it's a it's a good movie, but it also just emotionally for me really connected because I I had not seen this kind of concept of these two uh, people. What? I think. Did you just jump? Oh, you broke it. No, no, it pulled with the thing. We're good. No, I think it back? it's on this side. Oh, we are. Oh, that's possible. Whoa! Thank you so much. Maybe. Possibly? That's the shit. Whoa. Oh my god. The, Whoa. Uh, the audience has risen. Ba -ba -ba -ba. And saved Here, the podcast. Should we give a button for that? Hey, you're wearing an Oh my god. Uh, you're, you're, you go, come pick out a button. Here, you also button come right pick here. out a button. All three of you. Yeah. Come pick out well, buttons. Maybe, Participation maybe. Gets, uh, gets a button. So, you know, the thing we loved about, uh, I, well, I loved about the story oh, is how it focused on these two oh, characters, the Warrens. Yeah. Yeah. I've never really seen anything like that before, where they had this, you know, these people ground the story into something very real and human. And they make you believe them, you know, so much. And, 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 and I mean, obviously in the real life, the real Warrens, because they are real, based on real people. They're a little more theatrical and a little more dubious in terms of their story, but it, the way they sell them in this film are just so effective. 
And yeah, again, another story. I think it's just great. I think I really like family drama horror because yeah. I love to the idea of because a lot of times, yeah, like a lot, it is um, an interesting thing if you kind of correlate, you know, a lot of these true life stories and you read about them. You always kind of see that it happens to families who are going through a lot of stress, you know, moving or a death in the family, change. There's the loss of job, and you know, you can explore that whether whatever you believe, whether you believe ghosts are real or not, you can kind of understand. It's all an exploration of how stress can really it's affect. Like exactly, yeah. it's really how stress affects people and can make them maybe see things. Whether you believe it opens a door or whether you just believe that it just causes your own mind to kind of play tricks on you and stress you out. That's I love. That's what I love about the conjuring. And the conjuring scared the crap out of me. Like when that when there's a scene where she just kind of stares in the darkness and there's nothing there. And but yet her fear is so real that you I, I want to I almost see it I'm like I see it I see it but there was nothing there and I love it it's fantastic it's also like a movie that like I think accidentally created a fucking universe oh yeah the, like oh the, yeah, yeah. The there's Mark, the, there's the nun there's now the they dolphin got the nun, they got the doll the Annabelle it's, it's probably the only horror oh, universe right yeah. and, then, and then there's a third one where it's like prequel sequel territory as well it's crazy. Um, I also just wanted to mention a quick tag up that one of the great things about The Conjuring is, and also about uh, movies like Hereditary is I love when a horror movie finds like a stupid sound effect. Like for The Conjuring, it's like that clap, and for the, the, the Hereditary, there's like, you know, a, a vocal noise, but like that type of thing that you can replicate like with your friend and sneak up on them and freak them out like just so economically. Like when, when you can get something that stupid, Across and make it creepy and cheap. Like fart. It's you're you're, you're doing a great thing. <laughs> no, if you made a creepy <laughs> fart. Yo, if you yo, it's like just... Slither could so, make <laughs> only Slither James Wan is gonna figure out how to do a fart creepy. Slither made farts James creepy Lund. though. Slither had creepy farts. Yeah. And, or Dreamcatcher, yeah. Dreamcatcher, yeah. Dreamcatcher, yeah. Dreamcatcher yeah. had yeah. creepy ass farts. Yeah. I don't think it was creepy. Yeah. That's, that's, that's because Stephen King is a master of body horror. Like he's so good at taking. Uh, Dreamcatcher is a Stephen King story about an alien. It stars Morgan Freeman's eyebrows. You gotta see it. Yes, the book is better. Obviously, read the better. Read the book. But, um, yeah, so Stephen King is the master of body horror. Yeah, he's really good at the scary stuff. And my last movie, moving along really quickly, is The Ring. Of course. And The Ring has, um, I won't lie, it has, just because I saw it when I was much younger, um, it has that kind of emotional connection with me. But it, it was, at the time The Ring came out, it shook horror in America. It, How did you like The Ring? The Ring, oh no, I hated all the sequels. All the sequels are terrible, in my opinion. But this movie was really effective because it was something, it obviously taken from Japanese horror, um, but I think out of all the sort of Japanese to American horror translates they tried to do, this was the most effective because this one managed to find the balance between what made the Japanese horror movie scary and make an American audience understand that horror. Um, I just, I think that it was just really good use of body horror, you know, the fingernails, like if you don't like stuff with fingernails popping off and going, nails going through fingers and yeah, stuff like that, really squicky, gross, nasty shit. And then, um, and then yeah, and then just again, the story of tragedy and how it can just fuel this spiral of misery for characters. And like part of that is just the, the scariest part. Like the creepy, there's a creepy child in the film and you know, he's creep. Is he creepy because he can like see the ring or whatever, or is he creepy because he lost his friend, his his cousin, yeah. this girl, and he's just totally numb because he's trying to deal with it. It's it's really sad. I I don't know. Like, there's I actually had a friend who annoyed the shit out of me because when I want watch the ring with her, I was so excited. I was like, we're fucking watching the ring. You're gonna be scared out of your fucking mind. And then like I was like, and I'm watching her watch it, and she's just like. Her, her face is just like, every, it's like crumpling every few seconds. And finally, she was just full on sobbing. And I'm like, why are you crying? It's scary. And she's like, <laughs> no, it's really sad because the, And like, I realized, yeah, like, if you want to look at horror that way, and especially horror like this, you can look at it as just a tragedy. It's just like, man, these people's lives suck. Like, why is it only getting worse for them? Yeah. You know? And so. Danny's honorable mention. Do you have a comment? 
Oh no, I was just gonna say um, about the ring, but this is Suspiria. This is a great trailer, so. I'm oh yeah, this is my honorable that. mention, Suspiria, because it's badass. Their remake. <laughs> Crazy it. dope visuals. The remake actually looks potentially uh, has potential, uh, so give it a chance. I always considered Neon Demon to be sort of. Yeah. Suspiria. Oh, I want to see Neon Demon. Is yeah. that a, is that horror? Oh, Would you it's say it's that's a horror movie? Thriller. Yeah. Yeah. It's a dark thriller. Yeah, I would, I would consider sort of the end to be. Thank you so much, Danny. You're the bomb.com, lady look. Next up, we have Andres's picks. And if you want me to uh, play any audio pieces, let me know or, or fast forward or whatever. All right, know. so yeah, let me go. Okay, so I'll just go by whatever is on there. This is Larry Fasetin. Um, this movie's called, he made a movie called Habit that came out in 1997. Now, Larry Fassetten is, probably his biggest thing you probably know him from is he wrote Until Dawn, the video game, which is a fantastic video game. But before that, he was a filmmaker from New York. He did everything by himself, sort of made this company, and he, this, uh, he made one horror film that I saw called No Telling, which is basically a retelling of Frankenstein. And this is his retelling of Dracula, told from the perspective that Dracula is a female. This is a, a great movie. What Larry Fassetten does... This is kind of like Car um, Camille? Ca yeah. yeah uh, I, have, I don't know what that is. Camille is a short story, like an old, old, old vampire short story that's sure. about female vampire. Like early, like before Dracula kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. But this is, again, uh, you probably really like this because this is about how this guy gets involved with this girl that he starts slowly realizing. She thinks, he, uh, he starts thinking that she's a vampire. He's not. Oh, yeah. He doesn't quite know. He's he's no. kind of a drunk, and oh, he's uh, like he's kind of a loser in life, and he gets involved with this girl that um, might be a vampire. Now, what made this movie so impactful for me is the idea of this guy blending the horror genre with something from like, let's say the French New Wave or John Cassavetes' like indie run in the the late '60s. It's a he does really cool, realistic, gritty um, horror films that are. Totally about people and not really about the horror itself. But so they're so they're character driven films. They're very character driven. Like even like uh, Roger Ebert compared that movie to Taxi Driver. Like oh, it's wow. a, it's a really good, new, like you feel like the grit of New York. He does really cool, really cool movies. You I suggest you check out Habit. You can feel the dirt. Yeah, and he's really cool with uh, imagery too. Um, this is from 1997, so it feels a little dated, but it's it's really good. What's the name? Habit. Everyone in this movie looks like the poor man's version of someone else. Like, he looks like the poor man's version of Jack That's Nicholson. the director, the actor, uh, oh, yeah. Larry Fassetti. You've probably seen him in other movies. There was another guy that looked like the poor man's he, version of Stanley Tucci. He brought up, he, brought up um, he sort of produced the films by Ty West. I don't know if you guys know Ty West. He did uh, House of the Devil. Yeah. Um, oh, House of the Devil is a great movie. Yeah, House of the yeah. Devil, The Innkeepers, and he wrote, uh, uh, he wrote Until Dawn. He's really good. Um, he also made another great uh, movie. He did one movie after this called Windigo, which is all right, I guess. But he made one movie after that called The Last Winter, which I really, really liked until the very end. But I suggest you guys see that if you want to see um, haunted, uh, like, ghost animals. Like, it's really cool. Ghost animals? Ghost animals, The Last Winter. All with Rob Roman. It's like a ghost animal zoo. <laughs> yeah. So, um... Oh, no, not that. You can skip this. Um, I'm going to go... Um, Oh, like Escudero, uh, Steven Escudero said, um, I had the chance to direct an episode of Ash vs. Evil Dead. I was a huge fan, so obviously I'm going to have to go with my second favorite movie, um, The Evil Dead, the original. I know a lot of people really like um, the, the sequel for its comedy, but I, it's really weird. I grew up, I literally, um, when I was 10 years old, I saw Army of Darkness, loved it. And that was my favorite Evil Dead movie. And then when I was a teenager, it was Evil Dead 2. And now as sort of an adult, I've learned to really, really love just the original, the original Evil Dead. Did you, uh, did you have classic. a clip of Evil Dead? I'm like really confused right now. The original Evil Dead. Do you have a clip in here? No, I don't have a, I don't have a clip. You can skip it. Cool. But I think one of the things that makes the Evil Dead so different from every other horror film is the idea that most horror films are from the perspective of the victim. Like that's how you build suspense. You know, like the man around the corner. You're with the. You're with the. You know, they do. You know, car, carpenter widescreen, Halloween. You're being chased. But Evil Dead was different. That it actually felt like you're from the perspective of the demons, and you're and they're just having a blast torturing this guy. Yeah, it's very uh, sadistic. And I and I love that. And you can sort of see. I think Sam Raimi talks about like he made these movies just to torture. Yeah. Um, uh, Bruce, Bruce Campbell. Gettle, yeah. You know? <laughs> So it's like you could set you could like Sam Raimi was the demon torturing Ash. The, so. the other thing about Evil Dead that I think is why 
like it really like it makes it so special like Evil Dead is kind of like a movie like Clerks like El Mariachi that it kind of feels like a movie yeah. that is attainable like you know just seeing that they got like so many cool shots by just like tying a camera to a board and running it over a bunch of roots and stuff and adding creepy noises yeah bruce told like, me bruce told me like that they were literally like their fog like to get like well, cigarette like, smoke cigarette smoke yeah crazy. I didn't know that. that's pretty cool that's crazy yeah, so kids don't smoke because it's actually fog from evil dead yeah i, I love i, I want to ask you do you appreciate the the updated version they did at all? I did like the remake a lot. I don't yeah. think it's, I, I think the characters weren't as, you know. Powerful, yeah. Yeah, yeah, but like all, like all the gore effects, yeah. all that, that guy's oh, really, yeah, yeah. and the way it looked, it looked great. It has one of the best. So if you, if you haven't seen the, there's an updated version they did of Evil Dead, just really quick, a recommendation. It was uh, Fede Alvarez. Yeah, the guy that did Don't Breathe. Yeah, and really it's guy. really bloody and nasty. If you want to see, you know, decapitations and eye stabbing and uh, arm severing and it just lots and lots of blood it's a good it's a good actually a really solid uh, remake okay next all right question. so uh, my third film I'm gonna go with this this, um, this is a, a Japanese movie that I really love it's called uh, Cairo in Japan also known as pulse um, I think it's probably at the time it was my favorite um, depiction of a ghost I just thought it was super creepy this is it right here. You want to turn it up because the sound, like Japanese, is all Japanese horror is more atmospheric, and it's fantastic. So this is a guy seeing a ghost, and just the way they filmed it, he's just seeing just, a ghost. He just sees a ghost, and it's very simple, but you can tell by the style that it's just fantastic. It's really creepy, and they just doing like a creepy slow mo. She does this. It, Let the atmosphere. Oh no! Oh no! I don't like that. Okay, I got it. <laughs> oh. Now, the only ghost depiction that I think sort of beat this is this honorable mention movie that you guys should check out if you like creepy stuff, Lake Mungo. Lake Mungo, a, a fake documentary. Creepiest depiction of a ghost you'll ever see. Look up Lake Mungo. It's Pulse is the American, there's a remake with Kristen Bell that's awful, um, but the original is called Cairo, K-A-I-R-O. Okay. Oh no, no, no. Really good, really good ghost movie. It's actually freaking me out. When She's gonna be in the toilet. Oh no! Oh, 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 oh my god. Oh hell no. You gotta go, sir. The Japanese know fucking atmosphere, bro. Like, <laughs> and they know how to scream, too. Okay. Yeah. Great movie, great movie. Um, it, 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 uh, this is an anime film that... Um, I'm a huge fan of Alfred Hitchcock, and I think the closest anyone's ever gotten to updating or evolving Alfred Hitchcock is Perfect Blue, the anime from 1997. Fantastic movie. This is like it, it blows my mind that the closest anyone's ever got to Hitchcock is this anime movie. Um, very, very, very good. Very cool psychological horror. Some people might even argue it's not horror. I think it's a, I think it's horror. I think it's a type of horror, psychological horror. Um, anime counts. Anime yeah. counts. But the Maze of Rulebook. Watch out. convention. This is a fantastic movie. Anime was not yeah. a mistake. Yeah, and then, <laughs> I know my I know my audience. Um, so um, this also I think. Uh, in Requiem for a Dream, uh, D Darren Aronofsky stole the shot directly oh, from yeah? the, the bathtub shot is taken from this movie. The famous... Uh, Steal Pond. from the best. Steal from the best. This movie's fantastic. Wow. If you're into psychological horror, and it's also, um, another thing, Darren Aronofsky, um, in my opinion, he remade this movie as Black Swan. Like, it's sort of very similar to Black Swan. It's like no, the no, exact no. same thing. To kind of tip up a really bit about psychological horror is that you know a lot of there are good slasher movies and really good kind of jump scare movies, but I feel in my personal opinion those things don't necessarily stick with you. I mean maybe when you're a lot younger those things might stick with you, but I think as you get older the stuff that kind of makes me sit up at night and kind of walk away from it is the stuff that is really just yeah like about you know. The, the mind and, and things that don't necessarily seem unsettling at first you walk out and you start contemplating like wait a second did I see that when I saw that in that shot especially if they frame it really well 
and they kind of hide things from you in a horror and you have to kind of go back and see it again, you know, you really get... Yeah, I, I really did. I mean, I, Guillermo del Toro said it best. He said there's two types of horror films. He said there's the horror film that plays hide and seek, which is like those more slow burn, I would say, type of pulse or Ghost and, it, movies, yeah, yeah. and then there's the the horror films that play tag there's two games you can play tag is like the i guess the reanimators dead alive brain dead and i always i always really so, like that so, yeah the so, jason movies so spurts of like crazy things happening and yeah then, like lulls yeah, back yeah. and forth i mean usually i'm a fan of both as long as it's done right like but i do tend to gravitate more towards slow burn weirder the weirder the horror film the the better um, word, word. And one quick ad to invite, to encourage everyone to uh, stay awake even further through the long day. We have an original piece of art by at Arobus Art on Instagram right here that one of you guys will walk away with at the end of the panel. And at the end of the panel, we're going to have a trivia section. Looks like we have six pins left for and, prizes. And then we got seven, uh, seven pins left. And some toys. Nine, oh my god, nine? Nine, 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 no. Nine means no. And give it, give it, give one, yeah. Andres' next pick. Okay, we have eight. There are eight left. Okay, so um, my next pick is uh, uh, an Italian film called Della Morte Della More. It's also known as Cemetery Man. This is one of the weirdest and coolest zombie zombie movies I've ever seen. Um, it, Audio? Yeah, put audio. It's, it's hard to describe this movie, really. It's about a dude. Well, so we'll hear the actor describe it. I like this movie. I have seen this movie. Whoa, that's awesome. Oh, God. A man who looks after a cemetery. And in the cemetery, the dead uh, keep coming back to life. <laughs> All right, so this movie is very surreal, he ain't very, no time for that shit. very, very weird. It's it's very like it has a, a sense of melancholy but playfulness at the same time. It's it's uh, directed. This guy's only made I believe three films. And he's like a protege of Dario Argento. He did um, Stage Fright was his first film. Then he did this um, equally amazing movie called The Church in 1988. Great movie. This movie is just all over the place, but it's so well done. It takes you on a journey. It's very surreal. It's very beautiful. It's very funny. It's just, it's, it's almost like, again, I, I really tend to love the films that skirt, that play with the horror genre itself. And so this is a prime example of you can't really identify what type of horror this film is. Is it a comedy? Is it a dark comedy? Is it a, a sad uh, horror film? Like it's, 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 it's all out of one and it works beautifully. It's Correct great. me if I'm wrong, but isn't there a part in that film <coughs> where he's trying to have sex with a woman but she only wants him to have sex with her because his penis is limp? Yes. The, yes. That yes. is what I took away from that film! Yeah, so he yeah. gets it. He literally Ooh, tries to castrate the, the movies. Yeah. He's trying to oppress her, so he, he literally to tries to cut his own dick off or to oppress this like, girl. Yeah, that's, yeah. The that's, that's the scariest thing when you're trying to close in a cemetery. It's, it's really weird. Like basically, um, one of the plot points is that he keeps seeing this girl come to the cemetery that she keeps losing people, and he's falling in love with her. Like, and she's saying that she's different people, but he doesn't believe that, or he does. I don't know. It's very weird. Doesn't really explain it. But he falls in love with different th this different version of this what girl. So this? it's also a romantic comedy, believe it or not. What is this? Yes, it first is. dates by Adam Sandler. Yeah, <laughs> seriously, it's it's everything. I love I love movies that you know. My favorite um, my favorite horror film of movie, well not even horror film. My favorite movie of all time is Dawn of the Dead because it's everything the genre. It's kind of a modern western. It's a bromance. It's a horror. It's a comedy. It's a social like a social social commentary. It's like Dawn of the Dead is everything. So, um, next pick? I, yeah, what is my next? I don't even know what my next pick is. Is that your last one? I'll, I'll take that as my last that one. That was your last one? Yeah. Woo. Apparently. Sure. Woo! Yay. Moving along. So now, my sweet picks. One last few moments of uh, Cemetery Man here for you guys. Um, so, my picks. So, one more time, we're going to do a raffle. If you like on Instagram, at Art R O. B-A-S, A-O-R-O-B-A-S. 
Um, you can win one of these, this fine drawing uh, that looks kind of like it's from the reanimator, which I pulled a fastball and I think I put reanimator on my list, but I can't remember because up to the wire I was like changing picks, calling audibles, like this was you like gotta, the, I wasn't, I want to be a head, co a great head coach of my roster here. Okay. And you want to get the best picks in at the best time when they're at their prime. So these are my picks. My first pick is definitely going to have audio. So this is the horror film that made me love horror. It's the first time I ever saw as a kid. I saw this movie in the back of a car on a long road trip. And it just, it was a movie run at Blockbuster. I probably shouldn't have been watching. But since my brothers were older, I was allowed to watch it for, for relaxation. And it was like the first time I think I saw boobies on a, on a film screen. And I was like, whoa. And then all of a sudden, everybody turned into a vampire. And my mind was blown from dust till dawn. Crazy biker vampires always wanted to go to this strip club. If they open a line of titty twisters in Texas, is this I'm a, you, let's is do it. it? Would you say this is the cinema's best strip club? Like, For sure, a hundred percent. Maybe the strip club in Deadpool that Stan Lee's the DJ, <laughs> but only because of Stan Lee. And once he retires from DJ, I mean, this one has fireballs. Jesus Christ! Uh, no, no, we're gonna talk about. This. <laughs> I was 11. <laughs> what? Was 11. Reminder! This blew my mind. I was like, I had no idea there were so many kinds. And the best part is that this is all payoff. Because later, there's just like all the crazy monsters, and when all of the, the strippers turn into ghouls and monsters and vampires, like one of them literally in the deleted scenes has like a mouth in her stomach that's snapping at people and grabbing them. So we were 11, you thought they were talking about cats? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, 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 I think Dust Hold Dawn is such a great movie because it, it, it does present itself as, wa as one thing in this, you know, the, you have the two sleazy criminals and, and they kidnap this family and then you have this sleazy strip club and you just think, it, how can it just get worse for this poor family that's being taken down this road of debauchery and crime? And then it just turns its head and it's like, no, you're all fucked. And these guys have just, just, just done the worst disservice to you. But they're getting their comeuppance. In a way, it's like these two guys who are like... The fact they don't get satisfaction, yeah. that, that's, their, that's their thing. And they're obsessed with El Rey, which apparently is now the name of the channel that you can find all Robert Rodriguez and stuff. This is the dream film. Script by Quentin Tarantino, direction by Robert Rodriguez, creature effects by K&B effects for the first time, working with both of them. You got Greg Nicotero in a cameo as a biker in the film. Like, this for me is what is in my horror movie heaven, in my horror movie Valhalla. One more pussy, say pussy one more time, Jesus. Yes, he plays all of the little chihuahua, That's Cheech and Chong, Chong. Yeah. Cheech Marin, congratulations. I deserve it all. Yeah. Today you get knowledge. This movie also made George Clooney a freaking movie, movie star, star. Yeah. when everyone questioned if it could be my number two pick. Now this is, oh, come on. you know, this is controversial, this is a dark horse pick. I'm going to hate all you right? on this one. You might have to kill me with the chainsaw we brought to this panel. It's possible. But Night of the Living Dead remake. This is early 90s. This is directed by Tom, Z Tom Savini, who plays Sex Machine in Dust Till Dawn and did the creature effects for Dawn of the Dead and like all these great stunts in Dawn of the Dead. Mania. He, he, he's a guy who was raised off of George A. Romero. Basically, his film school was following George Romero's instructions yeah. and, you know, being playful. And he did the first remake of something George A. Romero did, which is now something that's in great fashion to remake John Carver movies and George A. Romero movies. Every, so, every soundtrack, modern horror when soundtrack, I found this, John Carpenter horror soundtrack, basically. Yeah, yeah. When I found this movie, it was on cable in the middle of the night. 
I was six years old. <laughs> six or seven years old. And I saw these zombies. I saw this amazing performance by uh, Tony Todd, um, the candy man himself. He plays the lead. And even though this movie, you know, it, what I love about it is it follows the beats of the first movie very closely, but it just improves all of the effects, and it adds a lot of dread. Well, it turned the girl. Or did when I was seven. It turned the girl into Ripley, right? Like she goes. Like the original sort of, movie. sort of, but it's still that guy in the attic who's an asshole who's the only guy who really gets to live. Does, right. any, does anyone in our audience actually like this movie? All right, you get a Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, now... Sorry, I, I threw a pin in. I'll pin it It was the Dawn of the Dead pin, so you never forget the real fucking good zombie movie. <laughs> My third pick is also a Bruce Campbell, also an it's Evil Dead-based film, oh. Army of Darkness. This is the... This, this is, isn't a horror movie. I mean, This well, is an action yes. This is the most action horror movie horror. Universal would make at the time, okay? Yeah. It's true. <laughs> it's true. It's, it's, true. it's the most horrific film ever. John Carpenter <laughs> fucked them over with bombing the movie, so they, oh. they did not stick they to They did not, like, they did not have faith in horror. Was this before or after Darkman? After. This is after Darkman? Yeah. Okay. So they trusted him because of Darkman. So this movie, it's got all the, like, you know, all the legendary Ash quotes pour out of this film. Just the, 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 the way that this at film... At this point in the franchise, he's like a, he's a parody of himself. Yeah, I mean, and this is what... It's fantastic, yeah. This is how you get kids to, to Evil yeah. Dead. I saw this yeah. when I was 10, and I was like, that's so much fun. And then I saw Evil Dead 2, and I was just like, what the fuck? Yeah, I actually saw this before. So yes, me too, movie. me too. It kind of feels like it doesn't connect, but sometimes it could be its own. You can watch this by yourself, and you'd be complete. It yeah. is, it, it is yeah, self-sufficient. Yeah, so, anyone out there, is Army of Darkness your favorite film? Of your evil dead, of the evil dead. You? Okay, you got another oh, pin? Yeah. Oh, snap. Wait, wait, I have, oh, I have a trivia question. I have a trivia question. I have a trivia question for one more pin. Does anybody know, and you guys already have a pin, you guys have a double pin. Does anyone know what the original title for Army of Darkness was? Bruce Campbell versus. Oh, right? No? No, okay, well. I, I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't never heard that. I, I never did, fucked up. Okay. A trivia question. Original title of Army of Darkness. Anybody? Ding dong, ding dong. It was originally going to be called Medieval Dead, but they didn't like that. <laughs> you know, so it was like, no, no, make it sound cool. Don't let anyone know this is part of the Evil Dead franchise. Let's start a whole new brand, <laughs> even though these characters already this character already exists. Like, you can get another Army of Darkness sounds like a metal, like a bad metal. Yeah, and look, they had a dope skull thing. Like, it was awesome. My fourth pick is also a Bruce Campbell. What can I say? We're Bruce Campbell fanboys. This movie is one of the greatest films to come out of the early 2000s <laughs> horror films. There's not that, for me at least, Sorry. early 2000s were like kind of lean times for horror yeah, movies. They were. Early? Yeah. And yeah. Bubba Hotep was like a, like a, just something, like a unicorn coming out of nowhere. It's a character-based um, movie about two senile old men uh, a, a, a black man who thinks that he is JFK and they put his body inside of, J, of, of a black man's body and that was the cover-up behind the Kennedy assassination. <laughs> and then um, they have this whole great origin where Bruce Campbell gets to play the crap out of Elvis and tell an amazing uh, story about how Elvis wanted to take like a weekend off and, uh, and, 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 and like live like a real person and the guy double crossed him and the real Elvis died on a toilet and I've had to <laughs> you know, be depressed that I couldn't be with my daughter and stuff. And it's just so full of such great comedy. It's got a dope monster creature effects. It mixes like Elvis and Texas and then a mummy. Yeah, a mummy, that's Mummy great. aesthetics, Bubba Hotep. It is. is it's best. very Bruce Campbell. Is this Hotel Transylvania? Like, no, it's just it's very representative of Bruce Campbell um, and who he is. I actually got a chance to. I mean, he's worked with him, but I got a chance to like hear him speak and like hang out with him for one night. And yeah, like it just it was so interesting to hear how he tells talks about mo making movies and and the, and how he's had to kind of work and and yeah, just I think. I, you know, I, I find it silly, but I also find it very Bruce Campbell, and in that way, I have a soft spot for anything he does, just because yeah. he's so self-made in that way, and he works really hard to kind of put himself across, and he's he's actually a very inspirational guy in terms of, like, making movies and having a career in Hollywood. And, 
Yeah. yeah. Yeah, he's great. And Ozzy Davis in a freaking horror movie? Like, he's got the chops. Like, this guy is... He can win an Oscar. Like, if, in, in, a, in a just full universe, if the MTV Movie Awards were worth anything, this movie would have won Best Movie. Boom. Better know this. Look at, oh, yeah, come on. Her name Kurt Russell? Is that what you're about to ask me? Yeah. Is that what you're about to ask me? Because you're a huge Kurt Russell fan. Oh, God Who's a better Elvis? Did you ever see Kurt Russell's Elvis movie? John Carpenter. Yeah, made, by the way, John Carpenter made I've Elvis seen it. Movie. I've seen it, but I only ever saw it once, so that, that I think, says everything you need to know about this answer. <laughs> Bruce Campbell. <laughs> you went, although I will give you this, though. Kurt Russell played a better Elvis when he did 3,000 Miles to Graceland <laughs> oh, shit. and was evil Elvis bank robber, <laughs> you know, chasing down Kevin Costner and shit. Like, oh, man. That's, yeah, that's, good stuff. that's like, if this was all Elvis movie, uh, 90s movies, that, that's, that's our next panel. All Elvis movies. All, Elvis movies. <laughs> all non Elvis movies. they have movies. to be made in the 90s. Exactly. Yeah. All non Elvis Elvis movies of the last 20 years. Elvis has uh, faded from family. My next pick is the classic American Werewolf in London. I have the transformation scene. Mm -hmm. John Landis. You gotta let them uh, watch this. This is such good stuff. And the uh, sound design. <laughs> This is the pinnacle of creature effects. Did you make possessed or something? What? He has a question. Who did what? Did the thing? Um, I think it is Robert Botine. Is it Rob Botine? Oh, Rob Botine did no, the thing. Bro, this, Rob is, this is Rick motherfucking Baker. Oh yeah. shit, the OG Rick Baker. Yeah. Let's make a world of dude. Do you mean the creature effects or do you mean who what? made the movie? Uh, creature yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, it's, um... Is this no, is Rick it's Baker. Is this Hans movie? I think... Yeah, yeah. I think it because oh I think... Oh my god, why can't I remember? Power, I so you know, if, you're wrong, if you're wrong on your trivia, that guy gets a pin. Yeah, you get a pin for fucking me. That's being dumb. I'm pretty sure it's Rick Baker. Who gets the pin? For the thing? Uh, not for the thing. No, it is Rick Baker for this, but yeah. I'm saying who did the thing. Oh, no, the thing is Rob Botine. Yeah, Rob Botine. Rob Botine. I know that. Uh, yeah, give, give, give. I couldn't remember off the top of my head. Give a pin. With the, with the pin them. Blondie, Blondie. Pin Blondie. these people. Oh, we also have two other prizes. We have some action figures to win for trivia. If you guys stick around, a few more minutes till the end of the panel. Chugging along. Is this your last movie? Because huh? I could segue to the trivia. This later. is almost the <laughs> last movie, I think, perhaps. What is your last movie? Oh, what is what my last movie? Wouldn't you like to know? Let's see. You get it. He's a werewolf, right? <laughs> He's in London. My oh, last film, come on. Dark Horse Pick. I love Stuart Gordon. What can I say? The Reanimator. This is the bomb.com. Okay. There are three Reanimator films. All right. And you think by looking at three Reanimator films, like yo, these like two and three gotta suck. No, they are awesome. All the Reanimator films are dope and special and awesome in their own way. It's just the genius of like, we're doing mad science all over everything. We're gonna say all these huge words and use all the pseudoscience. We're gonna have pineal glands sticking out of our foreheads. And then the ultimate creepy Oedipus complex thing that could happen with your dad's dead body. Your dad wants to do, oh no. no. Any it's thoughts, reanimator? Was that the dad? I thought it was the professor. I thought it was her dad. Professor. No, it was no, the professor. professor. He was professor just had a crush. It, it, Are you sure? Yeah, I'm definitely. Positive. positive. It's a three-way. Like that's the thing about Lady. great horror films. Oh no no! Oh, she was. That was her mentor. It was, it was a like professor a that figure. loved that that loved her. Yeah. And you, they did like a dinner scene where he's like staring at her and he's like. Eh, eh. Are you creep? Yeah, and he was in Guy The great thing about Stuart Gordon movies is they're just like this orgy of nasty, gross, you know, creature effects. Like, and he, the grosser the better. And I think the one that he was talking about, From oh. Beyond, <laughs> From Beyond is, is even more bizarre. I actually like From Beyond more than Rihanna. Yeah. Man. I, I could see that. I yeah. actually do too. Because that, that is just, I mean, it's off the wall strange and it's got like kind of a cosmic horror thing going on. Yeah, the, it, it's um, right. So, you know, if you're into tentacles and the alternate dimensions and other universes, you want to tell like, me off. Should... <laughs> no, I don't want to tell I just want to be clear that, like, I love From Beyond as well. It's just that I chose Reanimator over From Beyond and it was a deep back and forth discussion. Scorpion King! Oh okay? my god. 
Whoa, we're at the end of the podcast. You're in the Oasis. Whoa, this is crazy. So, um, <laughs> what I was uh, trying to say was, like, Reanimator came before From Beyond. From yes. Beyond would not be what it is if Reanimator had never happened. So that's why a lot it's of proceeded from a lot, Beyond. A lot of people, like... But From but, Beyond is not a romance. A lot of people, like, I remember people thinking, like, Reanimator, oh, H.P. Lovecraft, why did he turn it into a comedy? But if you, like, read the original story, it's a fucking comedy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> No, people, people don't know that H.P. Lovecraft did write like comedic stuff as well, not just and, uh, you know, and the mystic gr- horror. The greatest out of nowhere moment from uh, from from beyond for me is when all of a sudden um, this guy all of a sudden is in like his little cheetah speedo and he jumps on a giant monster in a pool of water. You gotta see it. And I just want to give a shout out to my uh, favorite version, uh, updated version of Reanimator. It is a Kanye West Reanimator. This was written by uh, Joshua Chaplins- Chaplinsky and H.P. Lovecraft. It is a real book. You can get it on Amazon. It is the tale of the Reanimator as told with Kanye West. And uh, Sometimes it's pretty fantastic. Button. <laughs> it's pretty fantastic if you want to enjoy yourself. And I, I think it's a, it's a great story. So okay, let's do some trivia. Let's get some prizes, right. hand it out, let's do All it. Right. So, I, I have my first question. We have two pins left. Two pins left, but okay, this question's gonna get, give them a toy. Give them a toy. Wait, which toy should we go, right? Let them pick. Um, oh. Okay, so I already asked these guys this. What was the name of the bar in American Werewolf in London? The pub, sorry. What was the name of the pub in American Werewolf in London that our two hopeless Americans go into? Get it. Get it! <laughs> oh, yeah, I got it. Here's the box. Alright, do you have a do you have any trivia, trivia question? questions? I have another. Go to do another one. Let me think. Alright. So James Gunn, who you may know. Oh, that broke? Oh, yeah. Sorry. James Gunn, who you may know from the Guardians of the Galaxy uh, movies. And he wrote and he wrote and directed right. his directional debut Slither, which was also great. He so made, he movie. actually started off writing trauma movies. What was his first trauma movie that he wrote? Do you guys know what trauma is? Uh, yeah. You guys know trauma? First trauma movie. Don't look it up. I'm gonna look you fuckers. Make sure you're not looking at your phone. <laughs> Does anyone know? James Gunn's first writing. No? I, I know. I was just saying so feel smart. Yeah. Was it uh, Tromeo and Julia? It was Tromeo and Whoa, Julia. Well, see, he did a classic. Yeah. He James did some Gunn Julia. He worked on some Shakespeare first. They, they, they come, they actually come. I, Did the PD Monster come from Tony, or was that a movie before? Give, give, yeah. give that prize, give one of those prizes to these people who saved us with the, with the projector over here. Let them take one of those. There, I'll give away their prize. Um, my trivia question is, okay, and I'll give you, I'll lead you guys in a little bit, all right? Danny Trejo in every Robert Rodriguez film is named after a different type of knife. In the first film, his name is Navajas in El Mariachi. In the second, in the, he's, he's called Machete later. He's called uh, Butter Knife um, later in, uh, in Spy Kids. He's Cuchillo. Um, in From Dust Till Dawn, he plays two characters. Their names, in the, in the sequel, he plays Blank Eddie. In the first film, he plays Blank Charlie. They're secretly twins. If you can figure out the serrated thing before blank Eddie or blank Charlie, you too can win Freddy Krueger last Funko action figure. Anything. I'll give you one hint since you guys are stumped. Wrestling <laughs> Just make... in general? Come on. Ramon. Whoa, shit. He wants all the fucking toys. He's gone! This motherfucker's going crazy. Alright. And then pick someone for the picture. Aroba's art, you want a trivia question for your pick for your photo? We have a trivia. Oh, we come on. Okay, um. Who? Stand up. Here, take the mic. Up to the oh, mic. Yeah, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. This is a robust art. He drew this awesome photo you see here before you that looks almost reanimator can I, can esque inspired. I, can I play for it too? Can I play for it too? Yes, you can play. Right. I'll play for the one. That's not, I think that's He's in the game now. I'm in the game. Watch out. I'm in the game. My money's on. Oh, can we take bets? I'll put my money on dress right now. I'm on the game. There's a trivia 
Oh snap, he's going, he's, he's set. He's gonna get good. If you don't have one, I think I have one for you. No, I, I have one, I'm just trying to, I'm trying to think of a, a good thing with it. Um, okay, okay, wait, uh, oh, 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 oh. Well, it's late at night, so easy is okay. okay. All right, all right. <laughs> Brain cells are sleeping. What, Trivia what, question. What was the only movie to feature a marsupial monster? Howling three marsupials, motherfucker! <laughs> what the fuck? Oh my god! Oh my god! Out of nowhere! Howling three marsupials! Oh my god! Give me that painting! Oh my god! Boom! It's done! Done! It's done! He won! He stole! Oh my god! It's amazing! We got two more pins. Who wants to grab a pin? It's amazing! Two more pins! Two one's more pins! One's got Jason! Pins. One's got the alien! No, you guys in the back! The alien! You, what? There's an alien? No, an alien. Yeah. What? No! No, no, no! He's not for you. Hey, I was here! Does anyone want a pin? I'll answer a question. If you don't want it, I'll give it to him. Alright, cool. Yes. Boom. Thank you. We got a Jason pin up here. Alright. Take that to start a celebration. So, one last thing to close this out. Thank you guys so much for listening to the Wimbacast. Hope you guys subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play. Um, oh, you have to go for it. No, I'm just saying, I hope one of these horror movies today that you haven't seen it, you go and see it and you love it. And then you think about me. And you're like, man, that girl was right. Thank you. Can I get a super special thank you to Arobus Art and Andres for being our special guests here today? Thanks to Nikki for coming to every single one of your podcasts. She's fun to point of view. She, if, I, if I had one of those little checker things, you would get a free sandwich by now. Congratulations. Um, I would also like to uh, thank everyone for staying up late tonight and hanging out with us. I hope this uh, has been fun for you and you've had a good time. Um, I have one little piece of uh, footage left to show here. Um, we have two uh, panels. Uh, we have actually a few, four panels left in our con schedule. Um, tomorrow morning, I think around, not tomorrow morning, 2.30-ish, something like that, we have an 80s movie conversation panel. We're going to talk about our top uh, 80s films, and we'd like to hear your 80s films, uh, movies you dig. Uh, we also have another panel, DCFU, The Good, The Bad, and the Bizarro Award Show. We're going to talk about all the best DC comic stuff, and our dress is banished. He's not allowed. He's not allowed allowed. there. He loves Marvel too much. He's not allowed. He wasn't feeling too good. They make better movies. What do you want? Yes. And then uh, Danielle has a great panel tomorrow night, late night panel as well. Please join Danielle. She's going to talk about the hottest sex that isn't sex in TV and film. Yes, it's gonna have a, it's gonna have a lot of clips. It's basically about (laughs) all of your favorite tropes that cause you to ship someone, whether that ship turns out to just be a crack ship or be a real ship. Um, I'm definitely, you know, sorry. I, I, the set, yeah, the sexiest sex that isn't sex. Don't expect any boobs, don't expect any body parts, don't That's expect spoiler, nothing. Spoiler. But good expect old fashioned hand holding and long full stares and heated conversations. But it's gonna be fun, so please check it fun. out. It's gonna be funny, you're gonna enjoy it. Um, thank you guys so much for coming. Take it easy. See you guys. Good night. Good luck. Good chainsaw. Blockbuster Guy Frank. Oh, it's Blockbuster Guy Frank on YouTube. Buster Guy Frank on Instagram. Follow him. Believe in the Frank. Frank is the way. Blockbuster's coming back from the dead any second now. Any second. It's going to happen. Reanimated. Oh, there's still people still here. We're not kicked out yet. Okay. For the people that didn't run away. Well, I think they, they have a podcast next. Oh, okay. Psych. Psych. Go. Get out. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Wondercast? Hey, Wonder. Hey, Wonder. Wondercast? Hey, Give yeah. it up for Wondercast, man. What an adorable name. Zena, make noises. Zena, make noises for the ad. Bet your bottom dollar it is. It's Xena of the Midnight Hounds with Duke and Rusty, also of the Midnight Hounds, and Steven, owner of the Midnight Hounds. 
Okay, Zena, I'll get to her and Danny <laughs> of Ad Gunda Cast and What's also that? owner of the Midnight House. Uh, Morty isn't feeling so well right now because Morty and Rusty are undergoing heartworm treatment and Morty's having a bad reaction at the moment. So, thoughts and prayers for Morty are appreciated. And if you guys want to donate cold hard cash, we opened up a coffee, uh, ko fi.com slash Vlundacast, the link on the podcast. If you guys want to throw us a couple shekels towards uh, Morty and Rusty's growing vet bill. <laughs> Yeehaw, but this is happy ads. We're doing fun things today. So, Danny and I were right out con. We uh, we made a friend named Wilner, yes. and uh, we helped him uh, get on the road when he was unpacking from the con. We had a great time at Love Alcon. Excited to go in the next year. Alcon's always a fun, positive place yeah. to be. I believe if you check the Alcon website, you'll find out that they were nominated for some awards for having one of the best LGBT gatherings That's in uh, all of the convention them and handled them. Um, and if you want to support Smash.Miami, which is to help stop, to create more affordable housing in Miami, specifically for LGBTQ people who are in a, one of the most at-risk communities when it comes to housing in the city, you can go and you can have a good time and support a good cause. Every first Monday of the month, there's a gamely, there's a... There's a monthly, a monthly game night and party. All right, they're on Mondays. They have karaoke hosted by Miami's best drag queen, Tiffany T. Fantasia. Karaoke is free with a ten dollar donation. They get a shade card and a drink. All donations go to the development of the first LGBT homeless shelter. Then on Wednesday, also at the Hotel Gathering, I believe, from 8 to 12, every third Wednesday, is game night. And you guys can go out, join the local community, and uh, check out smash.miami. If you guys want any more information or want to help out, or see what you can do to help out our local community, check out, you can email justin at smash.miami. I'd also like to plug... Um, friends of the podcast, Lisa Hammer and Levi Wilson. Their movie, The Sisters Plots, is on Amazon Prime right now, and it is a hilarious musical. It's a hoot! About three sisters living in the lap of luxury, trying to have suitors that are coming to woo them away. The neighbor's children are rushing to go check out <coughs> The Sisters Plots. And Zena and Duke, we're gonna watch it in a little bit, relax! But we just got one more at. So I want you guys to go... On Patreon, support Lavender Rangers Patreon. He was on our Power Rangers episode. I want you guys to support Flush Studios Patreon. They're making an awesome horror movie called Greywood's Plot that we're getting a producer credit on for our support. And Rebel Without a Crew Season 1 premieres Sunday, November 18th. Tune in to El Rey. Check it out. Watch Lucha Underground on El, on El Rey so that you can interact with D Rock, aka at Biopanic, on the Twitter. I am at Son of Us Escadero on the Twitter. <coughs> Danny is at Cardigan Vixen, aren't you? Yes. So if you want to see what crazy thing she's going to change her profile header name to, <laughs> okay? It's Halloween themed right now. She's been a. Uh, Swagger Inspector. Um, she's at Haunted Titties. She's she's had a lot of monikers through the years. Spooky uh, Noodles. Smoky, spooky Noodles. Yeah. Zena. Okay, and check out our Instagram at Bunda Vlog and at Midnight Hounds. Yes. At Midnight Hounds for cute pictures of Zena. I know Zena. I'm almost done with the ad. Zena's like, finish this ad so I can go out and play. Okay, I think that's it. Your list. Can we do a commercial real quick? For what? For a whole lot of. How do we do a commercial? 
Just like this. This is how we do a commercial. Okay. That is Andres. I am Steven. You can check out a whole lot of. It's a discussion about Marvel vs. DC ongoing. Cinematically. Cinematically. Cinematically speaking. It's a discussion of great scary things. Cinematically speaking. Cinematically speaking. It's a discussion of... We don't even seem that excited about this. <laughs> <laughs> Our guess is, uh... Talk about... No, but uh, I'm gonna put some epic music underneath it, so it's gonna sound like it's, it's really it's exciting. It's gonna go against... <laughs> yeah, it's gonna go against the aesthetic it's about. It's the like things. Droopy. Like me. No. Didn't Droopy die? <laughs> Should cut right there. <laughs> Where do you put? Where do you play these commercials? Whenever I have like, a, whenever when, usually when my dogs bark and I need to make a commercial break, I will put the commercials on there. And then on, uh, we're on Mondays on uh, Radiate.fm. Mm -hmm. So this commercial would just be, I mean, I never quite understood what this podcast was. What it is? We well, yeah. I it just always seemed to turn to Marvel versus DC. Mm -hmm. But was that always the... What was the ethos? Yeah. Well, it definitely turned more into that once you were around because you created a... Uh, Hostility. A counter-narrative <laughs> yeah. towards DC is really good. Anyway. <laughs> I just wish they Look could... Always lying I just wish the world could believe it like I do. Yeah. I make Suicide Squad move my own argument. That's my argument. <laughs> I just do it two hours. It's like, why do you hate, why do you hate DC? I just play Suicide Squad. I feel bad. Oh, she did. I feel bad because the problem with Suicide Squad, there's like, you know, there's so many moments. And they figured it out because when the, cause the trailers four. the trailers are better than the movie. Definitely. Okay? Because visually, there's a lot of good shit there. Like what? Huh? Like, you got, like, giant vats of acid, people hanging over them. Yeah, and a flashback. You got, like, you know, I'm saying visually, you got a lot of cool shit. Yeah, but I always, I always say flashbacks, like, if there's an action scene and it's done in a flashback, that doesn't count as an action scene. Because in my opinion... Because it takes away all the... All the yeah, it takes away all that. All and the action, mental action, and the fear of action. Action is to move forward, and they're literally not. You gotta move forward. It's like Daredevil, I gotta go through that fucking hallway. I'll, I'll act like d die hard. I'll I gotta it. get to my wife. But you, you know, it. when you do a flashback, you're completely, you know, and, and one of these, uh, one of the worst, uh, worst movies that did that was Transporter 3, where they had like a huge action sequence done in flashback of him kicking ass. And it's like, and it was done through a phone call. Like, it, he gets a phone call from this guy, and they're like, oh yeah, I know you, and then they flash back to the thing, you know? To the, to the action sequence when they could have just done the action sequence then he gets a phone call afterwards you know it's like hey you fucking yeah you kill the man with the yeah you could completely kill I is hate it run run kind of touch no no because even if it was played with all the time remember? yeah yeah but even if it was she constantly did things different and that's what made it fun because it was yeah, yeah, yeah. forward mm -hmm. and the things were changing so yeah I don't count like Suicide Squad to me was very visually boring. Like they fought in an office space, and, like one of the action sequences. Yo, come on! <laughs> Every, everyone wants to they go to an office. Ass. They go to a machine gun and take out eye monsters. Uh, that that uh, well, what's what's hilarious is that those like the eye googly eye monsters that everyone turns into. Yeah, like that is apparently like all of the animators and all the visual designers, Warner Brothers hires to design shit. And that googly eye drawing was drawn by the director <laughs> on like a napkin and just handed and been like, yeah, he make just, something like that. He coughed in a napkin <laughs> and it's coffee. And they're like, yeah, yeah, 12 googly eyes, yeah, great idea. That's great. That was so bad. Uh, like the action sequence went from, what were, what were the set pieces? It was the alley first and they're just shooting at it. And then there was the, the office space and they're just shooting at it. Well. And it was like done in the exact same. They're counting none of the prison stuff. 
your count. What was an action thing in the prison stuff? Well, they had like the badass action sequence with you. Deadpool's introduction is a like you know. Deadpool was in it. I mean, sorry, Deadshot. His introduction is like he's that's like not sniper, an action sequence. Ricochet. That's not a dude. sequence. Yeah, but there's that's a cool, moment. There's cool music. There's cool badass music. There's someone shooting a gun. They're moving around. I think that's an action sequence. No, 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 no. Someone no. dies at the end. That's an action sequence. He doesn't even move around. He stays in one place and he shoots the bullet to go to that thing. And then he runs away before he gets caught. That's an action sequence. No, that was the worst action sequence. It was a small sequence. action sequence. Then it was the worst. Like, action it was like a like fan film type of action then, sequence. Then, then, then she's all that probably had an action sequence because I think <laughs> at one point the, the girl punches the guy. Right? There's a there's a the bunch greatest of like, action film of like, the nineties. They hired like, like top choreographers. The girl from She's All That is going to be at, uh, at Supercon, virtually. Really? Yeah, it's about time. Ask her about the Get Carter remake. She's That's all I care about. <laughs> Remember that movie? <laughs> Tell me about working with Sylvester Stallone. You were the druggy girl, right? Who was the director on that? Uh, I remember they tried I to remember. It's the guy that did um, the horror movie Boogeyman afterwards in 2004. Oh, God. One of the Sam Raimi movies, Boogeyman. It was awful. That was not a good one. No, neither was Get Carter. <laughs> <laughs> he has a bad ears. That was Strike 2, man. Oh. Strike 3, he was in Suicide Squad and they fired him. <laughs> so yeah, basically the podcast started out with like just talking about movies and then my friend Derek wanted to talk about wrestling and then I just kind of decided that it was like an umbrella to talk about different things with different people. So every time I kind of invest new time in a different person, I create a new sub brand. This is a new thing, it's like new guests. I create like a new sub brand. Cool. So you've been on enough episodes that a whole lot of this is a real thing. I always, I still think the name should be "Now This Is Podcasting." All right, we can change it to "Now This Is Podcasting." <laughs> yeah. Boom. There you go. A whole lot of just became and now this is podcasting. <laughs> just like that. That's a commercial. <laughs> Boom. We got, you know what? We just change your name right now in the middle of commercial. <laughs> now this is podcasting. Now that's how bold we are. Listen to us, radiate.fm. Because then you can have nice. Anakin sing, now this is podcasting. Like, you know? <laughs> like, it's. That's. You know, that's. That's. a whole lot of. Because the, then they're just opening up the doors for everyone's a whole lot of bullshit. Gonna, uh, a whole I, lot of stupid shit. I considered our spirit animal for a long time to be, like, the Superman that never was in Justice League with, like, the mullet and, like, the black suit. But now I'm going to retroactively and just imagine him as, like, scarred, destroyed Anakin Skywalker. Yeah, that's way cooler. Okay, all, like, gnarly and fucking... As a little kid. <laughs> what? <laughs> the little kid all scarred and gnarly. Oh, we can talk about some of the Star Wars shit. Have you heard about the Star Wars shenanigans going on on the internet? Um, I heard... Wait, wait, hey, let's start with okay. Let's start with me open. Let me open. Sure, sure, sure. Now this is podcast. No, no, no. All right, we can change it to now this is podcast. <laughs> yeah. Boom, there you go. A whole lot of just became and now this is podcasting. <laughs> just like that. Kurt Russell what should be talking. He's like the Meryl Streep of action movies. Kurt Russell? Yeah. Big time. Do that in this. Disney? I, they were like triple X. I want all that in here. Like <laughs> <laughs> They were like triple X. What did we get? Disney has never hired, in a big way, a, a known Asian director. Let me that was yeah. that was a bad. Hey, I, I got I got I saw that movie in the theater, and I remember I saw it with a a, a, a vet, with an old dude, with like his, <laughs> and in the middle of the movie, he takes off his hat, <laughs> <laughs> like just like I don't want to be so not, with this. not proud of what he was saying. Uh, I swear to God, I asked Diego, we we were looking at this vet. I was like, well, I wonder what he thinks of this. Got the something. ectoplasmic trash. Yeah, take it in the face. Take the ectoplasm to the face. Yeah. Don't take a money <clears throat> shot to the face. But you know, one of the also one of the brilliant things about the original Ghostbusters is like they're they're going through all this shit in that workman's like mentality. Mm -hmm. And then there's that scene where Ray is talking with Winston and like he brings up Bible verses. You know? Yeah, and it gets all biblical. And, and, it, and it gets scary. Like they, they sort of like you see Ray right. like, holy shit, like what we're doing is really like that's that's great. Yeah, it has a connection. And, and yeah, and, and I think the, the problem with Deep Impact, not enough action. Michael Bay knew to like douse the movie throughout you like little what, action set you pieces know what would be the greatest, versus just one set piece in the last. That would be the greatest film festival ever. What? You do Armageddon, Deep Impact, back to back. Okay? Mm -hmm. Then you do White House Down. White House Down. <laughs> I know exactly where you're going with this. And uh, Olympus Has Fallen. Yeah. Back to back. Yeah. <laughs> What's another? What's another of the two? Oh, the Magic. You do the Prestige. And the uh, Edward Gordon movie. The Illusionist. The Illusionist? Yeah. yeah. Together. Back, back. 
Let's go full fucking cartoon. Dude, who would make what the fuck? The perfect Jurassic Park movie. Peter Jackson. Oh fuck yeah. He would make the perfect oh, Jurassic fuck Park yeah. movie. And Jeff Goldblum's in. If you didn't see that coming, you're a moron. Huh? If you didn't see that coming, you're a moron. Then I guess I'm a moron. You really thought Jeff Goldblum was gonna be in the movie? Now this is the podcast. You're listening to the Voonda Cost. We're on express elevator to hell. Going down. Two. One. Mark. Well, what topics do we talk about on the Vundacast? We talk about whatever we like, but mostly we talk about pop culture. We talk about Star Wars. Mira, who's Snow White? She's supposed to be some kind of consultant. Apparently, she saw an alien once. <laughs> Whoopie fucking do. Movies we've seen. Don't lie. All we talk about is Why aliens. Oh, yeah, right. All yeah, we talk right. about is aliens. All we talk about is bringing things back to Star Wars. <laughs> All we ever do is bring things back to 1997. Don't fuck around. Yeah, I guess he's right. He's selling his friends out. In your face. Stop selling us out, Steven. Stop telling the truth. Danielle, you are not alone. Neither are you listeners. Mondays at radiate.fm with the Vundacast. Chewing. We're home. The Vundacast, which is on Mondays at Radiate. Hey, Danielle. Yes. Co host of the Vundacast, co workers. Mm-hmm. How many nipples does Kylo Ren have? Well, only two, but they are glorious. To find out how glorious they are, tune in Mondays, Radiate.fm. Ray love all year long till episode 9 comes out and beyond. Check it out. I am the ultimate badass. Yes, guys. State of the badass art. You do not want to fuck with me. Hey, Radiate listeners. You should tune in to us on TuneIn. Because the podcast is also there. You should stitch yourself to us on Stitcher. Because we're down. And if you want to Google Play with us, our podcast is also on Google Play. But me, I, I just use iTunes to subscribe to my own podcast. Great! That's just fucking great, man! Now what the fuck are we supposed to do? Where's the real pretty shit now, man? You finished. Man. Game over, man. It's game over. What the fuck are we gonna do now? What are we gonna do? Subscribe to the Vondacast.